Hi guys, welcome back to Dr. Somji's skincare channel. I'm Hinal. I'm Dr. Somji. And as most of you know, I am actually expecting. So today I'm going to do a video about uh, pregnancy skincare, what you can use, what you can't use, um, and uh, the pros and cons of certain products. Absolutely, we're gonna talk about the science behind it as well. Yeah. So I'm gonna go through some clinical evidence just to make sure that you're, well, rest assured. Yeah. We did do a post on TikTok when I just kind of was very, very safe and said, you can't have this, can't have this, can't have this. It got very popular and people were like, no, but you can do this. You can use retinols, you can yeah. use this. So we're gonna try and make it, well, we're gonna try and be definitive today, yeah. right? And we're gonna try and say, well, look, this is what you need to do, this is what you don't need to do. So stay tuned. So let's discuss some of the common skincare uh, products to steer clear of during pregnancy. Now the first one up is retinoids. Now retinoids include retinol, tretinoin, isotretinoin, and they're commonly found in anti-aging products um, and acne products. Now this includes things like um, retinol night serum, such as Differin gel. Love Differin, um, yeah. yeah. While they're effective ingredients for various skin conditions, they're best avoided during pregnancy as high doses of vitamin A have been known to uh, be associated with birth defects. Yeah, so like a lot of this evidence is uh, harking back to oral vitamin A, i.e. Roaccutane or mm. Accutane. Um, that is definitely associated with birth defects. Right, so if you're applying a, a retinol topically, does yeah. that change? So the amount of drug absorbed from the skin when you're using the product is actually very low, but there are four independent published case reports mm. of birth defects in literature associated with topical tretinoin use. So tretinoin in, on the retinol ladder with people that follow the channel is, is, is a pure retinoid, so it's high concentration. Mm. Things that are over the counter, like very low strength retinols and things that you buy in the high street, you're talking about very low absorption. Yeah. But if you're on like 0.025 or 0.05 or 0.1% tretinoin and, and other things that are higher like tazoterotene and things like mm. that, then you really want to be a little bit um, careful. So um, the role of topical retinols in these cases is still very controversial. There are prospective studies that have examined the use during the first trimester of pregnancy with 96 and 106 women did not find an increase of major malformations or evidence of retinoid embryonopathy. Mm -hmm. so, so these are kind of things like birth defects. But look, just looking at 96 and 106 women in two separate studies is not high enough in yeah. terms of case reports. So you need larger cohorts to really be encouraged that topical retinoids are safe. What I would say is if you're using prescription-based retinoids, i.e. Um, even third-generation retinoids like Differin gel, even tretinoin and things like that, then probably you want to stay clear. Yeah. But if you really just want to stay on a retinoid, I would say yes, something very low-strength retinols over the counter are probably fine, but why use a retinoid when you can use something like Bicuchio exactly. during pregnancy? So look, if you, this is never medical advice on this channel, it's just looking at clinical evidence. But if I'm gonna give advice, I'd probably just say, just take the risk out. It's only for nine months. You can have a glow during pregnancy. Yeah. And just use Bicuchio. And instead. that's exactly what and I use in my products. Exactly. Bicuchio that we recommend here on the channel. So Bicuchio is a plant-based um, ingredient that basically mimics retinol. Yeah, and, and gives you the same results, well, but it's on a slower, slower... Yeah, so I mean, when you look at comparative studies, they always say it's just as good. I don't think it is just as good once the retinol gets higher. Of course. But what's really there with Bacuccio is that it doesn't cause that kind of retinoid reaction, so the redness and sensitivity, which is quite nice. And definitely when we've been formulating products, we put retinol and Bacuccio. We do. So, um, so there's different benefits for it, but it's a nice mimic. So the next thing we're going to talk about is salicylic acid. So salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid, which is commonly known as a BHA, um, and it's generally used for acne treatments and, it, and it's used in exfoliating products. While low, low concentrations up to 2% are considered safe, it's also advisable to avoid using higher concentrations of these for prolonged use during pregnancy, um, as that can also be absorbed into the bloodstream and potentially affect a baby as well. Yeah, I mean, topical salicylic acids is an ingredient that's pretty much in everything. So you have to be careful about like layering of products. 
There's a number of large studies have been published in which uh, researchers have examined the outcomes of women who have taken low do dose acetyl salicylic mm. acid during pregnancy and there was no increase in kind of like baseline risk of adverse events such as malformations, preterm birth mm. or even low birth weight. But there's been no studies that have been conducted in pregnancy on topical use. However, as such a relatively small proportion is absorbed through the skin, it's unlikely to pose any risk to a developing baby. So if the oral study with oral salicylic acid was fine, it's very unlikely that topically is going to be a problem. But I think the advice that we generally say is that, look, I think you'd probably say, look, anything up to like 2% or in a wash is probably it's generally okay. safe, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't probably do something that's, you know, kind of topical leave-on product. Um, and also when you're pregnant, you know, your blood vessels are a little bit more open, you yeah. get the process of vasodilatation and these things can sometimes irritate the skin barrier as well. So I think just doing harsh resurfacing during pregnancy is probably not a good thing anyway. No, no, um, I, I would personally, um, I mean I would use it, however just I would... Just a wash, right? It, it, exactly, yeah. and just a wash or maybe like an exfoliant once a week, but um, I don't think I'd go about using it every day. So the third product we're going to move on to is hydroquinone. It's uh, a skin lightening agent and it's used to treat hyperpigmentation. Now there are limited studies that suggest it may have potential risk during pregnancy, so it's better to avoid it um, during this time. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Obviously it's clinically used as a depigmenting agent uh, for things like melasma, which tends to Fine. pop up during mm -hmm. pregnancy, and hence a lot of people are kind of drawn to it during that period of time. Um, it's actually estimated anywhere between 35 to 45% of it is actually systemically absorbed. Fine, so okay. it's in that's yeah. post topically uh, using that in human beings. So, um, and there's actually a single study that's been published involving the use of hydroquinone during pregnancy that said well, there was no increase in adverse events. However, the sample size of the pregnant women was very small within that study. So even though there were a few people that said it was safe, Maybe if you you know times that by a thousand, you'll probably get you know kind mm. of some people popping up there. Yeah. But like I said, based on available data, yes, hydroquinone, like you said, used during pregnancy doesn't appear to be associated with an increased risk of major malformations or adverse events. But because of those absorption studies that we talked yeah, about, where thirty-five to forty-five yeah. percent are being really absorbed systemically, I think. To be safe, you should just minimise the exposure until like further long-term studies with right, large agree. number of people within their studies participants can say actually yeah it's safe for thousands of people. So the fourth product we're going to move on to is sunscreens and these are used commonly to protect the skin from the sun's harmful rays and have been found to cause very little toxicity. Now the products have very limited uh, dermal or systemic absorption. Um, sunscreens have been used in pregnancy to treat or prevent melasma and as adverse events um, have not been reported. Yeah, and I mean just remember your skin's generally more sensitive during pregnancy. You've got more, you're prone to things like melasma. Yeah. So not using sunscreen is terrible and in any, in any case really. Um, there's a lot of controversy about sort of chemical sunscreens and things like that which we will follow up with a video yeah. on these things. Chemical but versus physical. Yeah, and I mean, just generally, just using sunscreen, you should be doing that on a daily basis anyway. And I think it's really important to continue using it during pregnancy. Yeah, and I, and I, well, I would say that even if you're at home and you're sitting near a window, you should always wear SPF. And I also think that even halfway throughout the day, you should try and top it up, especially when you're pregnant, because you are more prone to getting melasma. Yeah, absolutely, and if you're outside, every hour as well, so, yeah, totally so it's really important. The fifth thing we're going to talk about is topical antibiotics for the skin. Um, so there are two uh, particularly popular ones which are clindamycin and erythromycin which are used either alone or in combination with other agents such as topical treatments for acne. Um, now there was a surveillance study examining oral or topical use of clindamycin um, and it was reported with no increased risks. Yeah, so no risks of malformations. It's a good clinical study that I like looking at because there were 647 women within mm. that study, which is a nice 
sample size and they particularly looked at the first trimester. Similarly, there have been no increased rates in adverse outcomes documented in several studies mm. evaluating the systemic use, i.e. the oral use, of clindamycin in the second or third trimester. So, you know, the oral use of erythromycin in pregnancy has not also been associated with any kind of like birth defects in several thousands of women when you're looking mm. at collating all of those studies. Um, so look, I think that topical use is absolutely fine of these antibacterial agents. Um, with oral use, always consult um, your medical physician just to ensure that everything is okay. And like I said, you know, follow their medical advice. But I think topical is absolutely fine, especially if you're dependent on them as well. Yeah. Sometimes some people's acne flares up during pregnancy, so you can continue using that quite nicely. And then also, you know, my favourite ingredient that you should be using during pregnancy anyway is azelaic acid. I've done separate videos on that everywhere, over social media. Um, maybe I'll just release a few more about it, azelaic acid. I love it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I actually do think it's really beneficial and it makes such a massive difference to people's skin, even just using it alone. Absolutely. And it's just so very safe. Yeah. So, and that's what I love about it. So the sixth uh, ingredient we're moving on to is glycolic acid. This is an alpha hydroxy acid and it's found in many cosmetic products. Um, and they're generally used to treat several uh, different skincare concerns. Um, there have been several uh, studies demonstrating adverse reproductive effects when glycolic acid was administered in high doses um, and much larger than those in topical cosmetic products. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with that. So obviously, if you're getting it in very, very high doses, mm. it's not a good idea. But when you're talking about just topical application on our skin, then very little is absorbed systemically. There are some studies examining the use of glycolic acid um, during pregnancies, very, very limited. So actually, they're probably not even worth mentioning. It really, topical application of glycolic acid is going to be of minimal concern. So probably you can use your over-the-counter glycolic acid in yeah. things like washes, um, very small kind of like leave-on concentration products as well is absolutely fine. Um, but like with anything in life, just don't overdo it. Yeah, and what do you think about uh, leaving it on with like face masks and face sheets and things like that? I think in those face masks and face sheets, the ones that just go on the surface of the skin with all that hyaluronic acid, mm. I think it's a very low concentration. Yeah, it's so, very minimal. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't really worry about the use of glycolic okay. acid during pregnancy at all. So the next and final skincare ingredient that we're going to talk about is essential oils. Now this is quite a big one because actually um, people sometimes do get confused with which oils can and can't be used. Yeah. Um, so while some essential oils are generally considered safe uh, during pregnancy, others should be avoided um, due to obviously potential adverse effects. Now, um, I think certain oils like rosemary, peppermint, sage and clary sage should be used sparingly or they should literally just be avoided altogether because I think, yeah, well, they're known to stimulate contractions or cause other complications. And there are some obviously late adverse effects that you can get even in non-pregnant yeah. individuals. Um, now, people always say all essential oils are bad on skincare. It's not actually true. Yeah. There's like one or two out there that are not too bad. But generally, you want to stay away from that nowadays. Um, I think we all know that. It's kind of like an unwritten mm. <laughs> rule in there. People that know um, skincare that you shouldn't really be having high levels of essential oils anyway. So although they kind of smell nice and you know they're all great. Yeah, and they um, sound very relaxing. Yeah, but yeah, I mean you don't want early onset labour. Um, actually, you had early onset labour. Did you use any essential oils? No, no, I just no. had a really hot curry. <laughs> oh yes, so maybe no hot curries. <laughs> don't go for an Indian meal. Probably not a good idea in your last <laughs> trimester. But uh, yeah, that's it. So the conclusion, well, apart from hydroquinone, which is absorbed systemically in quite large amounts, um, and topical uh, retinoids owing to those few case reports that we mm. mentioned, skincare products are not really expected to increase the risk of malformations or any other adverse effect, uh, effects on developing fetuses. Um, so consequently, pregnant women can look their best without compromising the health of their unborn children. So, so I hope this video helps you and remember to always consult with your healthcare provider before using any skincare products that you're unsure about during your pregnancy. Um, perhaps go to your dermatologist or your 
your gynaecologist or whoever is treating you uh, professionally. Um, they will be able to give you personalised advice based on your specific needs and your medical history. Um, I would recommend opting for something, you know, opting for a gentle, natural skincare range and maintaining a consistent skincare routine, uh, which will help your skin stay healthy and vibrant throughout your pregnancy. Yeah, so absolutely. Look, my superstar ingredients during pregnancy, you want to be using a lot of hyaluronic acid. You want to be using products with great ceramides in there yeah. as well. You could probably use some azelaic acid just to kind of like uh, get that nice sort of activity, reducing pigmentation and as well as redness. And also using Bakuchio at night, which is really, really nice. So there's many things that you can do during pregnancy, but just enjoy it because, yeah. you know, you look glowing right now. Yeah, well, you, you generally have a natural glow, but I do agree that azelaic acid really does help because your vessels do get very dilated and you do, I get a lot of redness around my cheeks, um, which leaves me looking a little bit rose more, rosier than I would rosy, like to. Rosy cheek. <laughs> so let us know anything, if you've got any questions about any of this kind of stuff with related to pregnancy. If you want us to do any more videos mm -hmm. as well, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and also click that bell button so you'll be notified of new videos when they're posted.